So Charlie, you started your amateur boxing career not too far from here at Arbor Youth. Just around the corner from this pub. You know what I mean, then the person that owns this pub, he used to box for the Arbor Youth as well. I, I just learned that today. Um, the, the very famous Repton was only just around the corner in Bethnal Green. Massively successful amateur like yourself. At certain times, was there any thought of, or pressure to go to Repton? No, they weren't really, because I, I, I used to like the Arbor Youth. I, you know, I went there, I enjoyed it there, and I learned a lot there. And I, and I won loads of titles anyway, so there was no need to, be, to go to the um, Repton Club. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you won six ABA titles. Six ABA titles. I, I entered the um, ABAs at, at the age of 15. And I went through, won about four or five fights then, and I won the ABAs. Then I went in Class B, I won the ABAs that year. And then when I was 17, they said it's too young to go in the ABA seniors. I said, no, I think Mick, Mickey Abrams was the champion, and I, and I sparred with him once. I knew I could beat him. He pulled out. He didn't go in the ABAs that year. He was only 23 years old. I was 17. I went through and won it again. And then I won the ABAs at 18, 19, 20. So am I right in thinking you won four senior ABA four titles? Senior, That's why I got it wrong earlier on. So it's good they to know. They, they, they don't remember the two juniors. And they're important too, right? Oh, yeah. That's the uh, stepping stone, isn't it? Moving on. Yeah. Um, you were an Olympian in 1976, I believe. 1976, Montreal, yeah. I went to the Olympics. I was a, one of the favourites to win a medal, yeah. which I never. I was unfortunate. I boxed a Canadian kid from that country and he caught me with a good um, right hook he caught me in the third round he's an orthodox was he was he an orthodox right hook that's how, that's, how I, that's how I knew you were talking about the southpaw right hook he threw an, he's, I had him on the ropes I went in to finish him off really I was hurting I thought I was winning the fight my hands down anyway he caught, bumped, caught me with his shot I went down and I got up and I, there was a clock above me I tried to look at the clock and I couldn't see it, so I stepped back. When I stepped back, I stumbled. I looked like I was hurt, you know what I mean? Like, the referee just went, stop the fight. And it was only 40 seconds to go, and I was winning. I was winning the fight, and it was unbelievable. Must have been a huge disappointment. Oh, I cried my eyes out afterwards. I was so upset because I wanted to win a medal in, in the Olympics, you know? Did you have any more amateur fights after that? I did, yes. I stayed amateur. Another year, I went in the senior. I went on, yeah, I went in the European Championships after that. And I got a bronze medal, and then I turned pro. I wanted to win the ABAs again, so that I can. I won the ABAs again. Just to, I didn't want to go on a loss, you know. Was that just a little bit more launching pad for your for your um, professional career? Yes, yeah, right. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what I've done. Being a flyweight. It's always been the case, certainly in this part of the world, there's not too many, so many flyweights around, so you tend to rise a bit quicker. Phenomenally, you actually won the British title, vacant British title against Dave Smith in your third pro fight. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. What happened was, when I was turning pro, I um, had a meeting with Terry Lawless, and he met me at Romford Station, took me back to his ass, and he said to me, I've got a plan for you. Can you fulfil this plan? I said, what plan is it? He said, your first fight's going to be eight threes. Second fight's going to be British title eliminator, 10 threes. Yeah. And the third fight will be 15 threes, British title. And I went to him, who am I fighting? He said, don't worry about who you're fighting. I said, what? Well, do you know what I mean? It's a bit quick, isn't it? But I said, I said, what about the money? He went, don't worry about the money, don't worry about the money. Anyway, I went, I thought, OK, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was sort of like, I didn't back out of nothing. I, I really enjoyed it all, so I, I wanted to go fulfil that, what he wanted me to do. It's an astonishingly uh, quick sort of, um, what's the word? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Neil McLaughlin in the first fight, he was the Irish bantamweight champion, come down to flyweight. I knocked him out in two rounds. Then I boxed Brent Griffiths from Wales. He was a Welsh champion. I knocked him out. In two no losing journeyman for you. I knocked him out in two rounds, and then... Dave Smith, he had 13 fights. I think he won 12 and drew one. And I knocked him out in the seventh. How, it's, it's very astonishing when you put it, break it down for me in those terms. Eight rounder, 10 rounder against good class opposition and a 15 rounder and national title fight. How, how did you, how can you convert your amateur fitness and stamina was, to that? I was in a little, um, at the end of the day, my, my style suited the pro game. 
You know what I mean? And I like a, I can go. I had a good pace on me. You know, what I, mean? I used to go straight out and work, and I wanted to hurt people as well. Uh, and I had the fitness really to go with it. I, I just trained a bit harder. You know. What I mean? So your first loss came to um, remind me of the fella's name. I was I was checking things out today. Am I? Juan Diaz. Sorry, that was your first reversal. Uh, talk me through it. Yeah, well, what happened was I was I was winning all the way through. I was winning all the way through. Got to about the sixth round, I think. I think it was, I think it was about the sixth round. I think it's ten round fight. Yeah. It was an international contest, and he was tough. He was tough. Very tough. I was beating him up all the way through. Yeah. And another one caught me. I'm not saying a lucky punch, but he threw it. He caught me. Against the tide, yeah. I was going in to finish him off again. He caught me. I went down. And that was it. I was just... He knocked me out. I was all right. I got up. I'm only about 10. I couldn't have carried on, I don't think. Because I was hurt. Yeah. That's, that's honest to say. It was a good punch. I was pissing the fight. Oh, he was. He didn't want to come out for the last round. Yeah. He didn't want. They pushed him out. Yeah. I saw it, and I went. I went to do him, and he done me. He caught me. Caught me below that. He must have just thanked these lucky stars and bump. That's boxing. Um, yeah. One oh, people will remember you for your British title, European title, and world title win. Yeah, yeah. But one very good non-title, one very good win on your record is against Santos Lassier, oh, who. For, for years after you beat him, he was ranked as one of the best fighters in the world at any weight by Ring Magazine and anybody else. Yeah. Well, that, tell, I'll tell you a story about that one. Yeah. I was supposed to be boxing a Mexican, number one contender. I forget what his name now. Oh, his name? I can't remember his name now, but I was supposed to box him yeah. on this show. He pulled out because he got injured in training. So they said to me, right, Charlie, Terry Lodge pulled me aside. He said, right, we've got you a nice, easy, non-punching, Argentinian kid, yeah. right? Santos Lassio, I said, all right. He's, he's, he's a bit younger than you, I thought, all right, I love it. Anyway, I got a fight on, got to the weigh and he's like shorter than me, but he was like a little middleweight. Yeah. I mean, like, he was massive, mate. Yeah. And he had a big head, yeah. and a nice, and he was really strong looking, you know, yeah. and he come over, he looked at me, screwed me out, and I, and I was the type of guy to try and do it back, you know, yeah. I'll tell you what, it was frightening. Yeah. Frightening, it away and was frightening. Was then all of a sudden, got in there at the elbow. Oh, I went out there, he sent me, try and feel him out and all that. I went out there all nice and casual. He, bumped, he decked me in the first round. Yeah, yeah I remember he that. He decked me in the first round and he hurt me. And I was, I got up and I was to run. Yeah. He, but he won the first round, hands down. Second round, I got back into it. Third round, fourth round, he went 10 rounds and I beat him on point. I won it fair and square. But he was one tough kid. When you look back on your career... But the only thing was, the fight after that, he, the South African didn't want to box me. He yeah. said, I boxed the geezer he beat. Yeah. He went over there and knocked him out in seven rounds. That's yes. what I've done it. Yeah. Um, when you look back on your career, your most proudest victory, is it the last year fight or is it another one? Um, I don't know. I think it was that world title fight, really. Against Matt Mercedes. Against Elionce on Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, um, right, yeah. That was one of my best. Cause I've always wanted to be a world champion, and yeah. that was the day. You know? Is it true to say, well, I, I know, it, before I even ask you, I know it is true to say, being a world champion then used to mean more. It was a bigger deal. You were you were front page news when you won that. You were on the news at 10, your news at 6. Yeah, right? but it was WBC, see, that, that was the only um, that was the only one going at the time. There was, there was WBA, but it wasn't recognised as well as WBC. Yeah, and um, that was it, yeah, it was fantastic, that was. But the only thing was, when I defended that title against the Filipino bloke, Frank Sedino. Frank Sedino, yeah. I had a brine boil in my ear. Yeah. And I was ill, mate. I was yeah. ill. I was ill. And I'll never back out of nothing. And Terry Lloyd said, Oh, you'll be all right. He took me to Harley Street, doctor, on the Sunday before the Tuesday. And they put me on antibiotics. And I got done in six, six rounds, seven rounds, I think. But I believe I was, it was the sixth round. I was in the right state. I was in a really bad, bad. I shouldn't have boxed. He should have been experienced enough to know how I felt. How can you have a blind ball in your ear? And you know, You're saying Terry Lawler should have been experienced enough to know he shouldn't have boxed? Why put me in there with, with a blind ball in my ear? Why don't he put the fight back a couple yeah. of weeks? Just put it back a couple of weeks, I didn't mind. I, I, I mean to ask you, when you talk about your, your team, your internal team, 
how much do you credit Jimmy Tibbs with uh, your success? Well, Jimmy Tibbs, I liked him a lot because he's an aggressive person. He's like a... I, yeah. I like the fight the way he wants me to, you know? Yeah. Get in there, work. And, you know, I mean, he was the right person for me. He was good yeah. as gold. When I went to a Spain, I went to Spain and... Yeah. You know, Jimmy was standing right behind me. He said, go over there. Go over to the boy and screw him out. Yeah. Screw him right out. Go on. Let's see what he's like. I went over there. I've done what he said. And it works. And I stopped the guy in the ring. I mean, three rounds. I remember a couple of trips to Italy you had with Jimmy to, to box a guy called Franco Churchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won the fights easy enough, first round KO, second round KO. But I believe the, the locals were a little bit volatile. Well, the only thing was, the first time we boxed on a little... That was it. It was on a pair. Yeah. All the audience was this way, and there was a there was a water there. Anyway, cut on story short. I knew he was a counter puncher, southpaw. Yeah. He was awkward to handle, so I thought I'd go straight at him and try and rough him up earlier on. You know what I mean? And I could stop him later on in the rounds. Yeah. I done that, and we clashed heads, and he got cut because he come down to me while I was going in. You know, we clashed heads. He got cut, and I um. They stopped the fight. They started throwing bottles in the ring, and yeah. oh, it was unbelievable. It meant, meant well, I had security take me out of the ring and everything. And then, but the only thing was, I beat Terry Lawless, signed up a contract where I had to fight him again. Yeah, because it's very unusual to get a rematch when you knock someone out in the first round. I was, I didn't knock him out. I stopped him on a cut eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. when the first round stopped him. Um, I had to wait for him to get better. I went over another part of Italy, but this time. We had an interview with the Italians, and the Italian bloke said, your name's Magri, he's Italian. Yeah. I said, yeah, it is, yeah, because my grandparents, years ago, I, they ain't really, but I mean, I made it up to get them on my side. Yeah. And it worked, it worked. But when I got in the ring, they all clapped me and everything, you know, fantastic. But this time, the second fight, I knocked him out properly. I counted 32 yeah. before the referee counted 10. He kept coming over to me, going, boom, telling me off, put me in one corner, put yeah, me yeah. in. I mean, I, I was counting one, two, three, four, I counted 32. Yeah. And he still didn't get up. They got him up and he was, and it was KO, I knocked him out. But he was good, he was good, he was class. He was very, very good. Just, uh, just fortunate to get rid of him when you... I got him in the corner. I'll never forget him, but when I used to be with Jimmy Graham, you get someone in the corner, you step one way, you step the other way, Right hand, left hook. Right hand, left hook. So I've stepped that way. I've come over this way. Right hand, bang, bang. I caught him with a right hand, left hook. He was just, he was gone. Step right, step left, right yeah. left hook, yeah? He said to me, always do that. Yeah. Especially if they're sad for. Step right. Make out to throw the right hand. Step left, right hand, left hook. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Straight down. The night it all ended against Sochi Zalada. Yeah. Um, who, 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 who was a great fighter in his own right as well. Um, how was that? Yeah, Sochi Zalada was brilliant, mate. I, I really respect that guy. He was, I can honestly say he was one of the, about the best best fighter I've ever boxed. Zalada was good, mate, yeah. yeah. And I, I gave him a good fight. I gave him a good fight. Earlier on, I, I won the first three or four rounds. Yeah. And then he cut me. But... Um, I wanted Terry Lawrence to let me go a bit longer, but he just he pulled me out. Sixth round, I think. Yeah. But that, that was caring? Yeah, I suppose it was in a way, but the only thing was, like, at the end of my career, he should have let me have another little go, a couple of goes, a couple more rounds, you know? I'm getting the feeling that your affection for Lawless is not huge. At first it was. I loved him to death, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, your money doesn't start coming in. There's a story I heard about the hotel the night you won a world title. When I boxed for the world title, we, we stayed at Wembley. We stayed over at Wembley. When I come down in the morning, I was finished. I was world champion, I think. They sent me, you've got to pay 190 quid. What are you on about? 190 quid. What for? He said, your hotel bill. I thought it was all covered, but it wasn't. I had to pay. I paid it. But what was Terry Lawless's words? Don't worry about it, son. It all comes out of your tax. Yeah. It all comes out of your tax. You know what I mean? I don't even know what tax I've got to pay. So you, you probably relationship soured a little bit as time went on. Tell you the truth, the first four years, five years was great, yeah. fantastic. Then you start realising you're not earning enough. Yeah. You, TV, I think you know TV money. Yeah. Ever, I boxed on the telly every fight. 
once I boxed against Churchy the second time on ITV. Yeah. All the others were BBC. Yeah. I never got one. What it was, the contract was crossed out. TV, all in deal. Yeah. Now, hey, how do you work that? Now I know my rights. Yeah. I should have got a lot more money. I didn't. When um, you got involved in the game a little bit after 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 your own fighting career ended and started training fighters and stuff, are you still interested in that area? Well, I'd like to do that, but the only thing is, really, the fighters I had at the time weren't, you know, a couple of champions. You know, at that British level, I would like to have a world-class level and, and go about... You trained Harry Andrews? Harry Andrews, yeah, I trained him. He, 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 um, he had eight fights with me. He had one draw, seven wins. I had Dean Piffy. What about um, Spencer Fearon? Did you work with him? I worked with Spencer Fearon, yeah. He was, he was, he was quite a good fighter. Yeah, he's right, yeah. He had a lot of potential, a lot of talent. And he, he, he's a bit of a character, as you know, and he's doing well now in a boxing game. Fantastic. Yeah, he's done very good for himself. In closing, Charlie, I don't want to hold you up too much longer. I'm very grateful for you coming down here today, nice. initially for the Jimmy Batten. But um, I have to ask you this. Uh, you used to have a sports shop on Bethnal Green Road, uh, which sold title goods, whatever happened to that brand. Um, when I was 15, my dad brought me to your shop once, and we wanted some custom-made shorts. I remember they were black and red satin, and, and he asked you, could you... You had a lady there that used to do the embroidery. Yeah. If you wanted your name or something, and you asked, we asked you, no, could the you put? Oh, okay. The, the, it's good to finally realise that. Um, and we asked you, could you put white sugar on a waistband? And you did it, and you gave us whatever price it was. But I think I've, you did a double take, and was that you sure you really want white sugar on a short? So I don't suppose you remember it. Thinking about, it, I remember the sugar bit, yeah, because yeah. Uh, what it was, I suppose the white sugar was. Sugar Ray Leonard and yeah, the white. I was white and I was trying to emulate Sugar Ray Leonard in some sort of poor fashion. So, so that was what I thought. I was 15. You got to, you got to give me a break. It's one hard thing to do to emulate a kid like that. Unbelievable. And I, I think I came a bit short of it, to be totally honest with you. He's one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen, Sugar Ray Leonard. It's, he's certainly my favourite fight of all time. L listen, Charlie, you weren't so bad yourself, and thank you very much for coming down today. Thank you very much as well, and I hope it all works out for you. Both. Yeah, the, um, Eric brought Lennox Lewis down my shop one day, and um, I'll never forget it because um, I recognised who he was and I said, is that who I think he is? He said, yes. And then he's come over and shook me hand and I asked him if he had any photos on him. He gave us photos and him. What a lovely man. What a lovely man. Then he's Lewis, he's one big, big guy, lovely, lovely guy. And one day when I was training down at Lion Club, Frank Maloney come down and he said, said to me, is there any chance of bringing a couple of fighters down to train in your gym? I said, yeah, of course, no problem. I had the Lion Club, it was an amateur club yeah, 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 in Oxton. Yeah. Anyway, I, I said, yeah, no problem, bring them down. And it was two or three people come down, do a bit of training, Lennox Lewis come down. And he started training in their gym, it was fantastic. Just the atmosphere and the presence of Lennox Lewis being in the gym. Yeah, really good. I just remembered another thing we were talking about the gym. When my dad went to your shop a couple of times, he had a chat with you. And what I wasn't there, but he told me, he talked to you one time and you said, you got a little bit frustrated sometimes the amount of investment being put into some of your training camps compared to Frank Bruno's training camps. Where uh, th I always remember you, uh, you were saying they get sparring partners from all over the world for infant American sparring partners, yeah. and you said, Who did I get to spar with? Even a world title fight, I've the engine Jones. Is it true? No. <laughs> I tell you, that boy was one hard kid. He's one, one tough Either. fella. He's still about, he's still about you know. He's, I see him. He's a lovely, lovely guy. I love him to death. I, oh, I, the only sparring partner I got ever was Ray Gattuse or Ivor yeah. Jones. Yeah. Ivor the Indian Jones, and he was Ivor the Indian Jones. He used to, <laughs> used to start blowing like an engine, you know, that's why they called him that. He was good. Tough boy. Fantastic. I'll let you go now, Charlie. Cheers, man.